Today's lesson is about ways to improve how you comp your 2-5-1s, going beyond the basic way of playing it, such as this. Now there's a time and a place for that, there's nothing wrong with it, but for me the 2-5-1 is a template. We can do a lot more with it, we can add a lot more interest and movement. When it comes to playing jazz rhythm guitar, we've got choices. Choices of going inside chords or outside. Now, I think quite often people jump for the outside stuff first, things like tritones and chromatic passing chords and things like that. And they often overlook the inside route. And if we've got chords two, five, and one, now they come from the same scale, say in the key of C, from the C major scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And that scale can be harmonized to give us the seven chords of the major scale. Chord one, C major seven. Chord two, D minor seven. Chord three, E minor seven. Chord four, F major seven. Five, G seven. A minor seven, chord six. Chord seven, B minor seven flat five. Back to chord one, very, very high up the guitar neck. So all those chords come from the same scale. So there's a lot of crossover in terms of chords which share similarities. So that means we could maybe inject some of those into our 2-5-1 and be less rigid with how we play the 2-5-1. Say like this. For me, that adds a nice sense of movement. It's more of a journey and it's much more interesting than where we started. And there, I use the three and the four to get from the two to the five. And then on the five chord, I use the six and the seven chord to take me up to the one chord. So in that example, we were going up. In this next one, we're gonna go down, down to the, from the two to the five, and then rise back up to the one chord. Now in that one, I did sneak in an out of key chord, an E flat minor seven, or the, the flat three minor as it's called. Chord so because it sits between the two chord and the three chord, D minor seven. E minor seven, you've got the flat three in between, would be E flat minor seven. That is also a very common chord to stick in to create additional movement. Now you might find all those chords a bit too much, a bit in your face. So what you can do is you can reduce the concept down and just use the bass notes, the root notes of the chords to imply that movement. Take those previous two examples and we could do this to them. Now for ease, let's try to have a theme. Here's the next example on the screen. So in this next one, we're gonna approach the two and the five and the one from the chord above. We'll do this on beat four to lead into the next chord. So we approach the two, D minor seven, with the three, E minor seven. We approach the five, G seven, with six, A minor seven. And then finally we approach the one with the two, D minor seven. So what I'm always doing there is using the chord above. Approach the two with the three, Approach the five with the six, and approach the one with the two. Here it is. Now let's try coming from the other direction. So approach from below. So we're gonna approach two with one, five with four, and one with seven. Now I think another important thing to learn about these chords is not just injecting them into your progressions to add movement, but it's also learning the key relationships between them because there's some really close relationships between chords and important ways we can think about the way we, we group chords within key. Because yes, you've got the seven chords in the key of C major, but then I all split them out into three different types of chords. And if you break these seven chords down into individual notes and play them as arpeggios, you'll see there's a lot of overlap because we've only got the seven notes when we're building seven chords. Take, for example, the two and the four, D minor seven and F major seven. They both share three notes. D minor seven, D, F, A, C. F major seven, chord four, F, A, C, E. Now you may already know that in the key of F, F and D minor are relatives of each other. So there's a relationship they share in another key. But in the, in the key of C, they function, chord two and four, they function as subdominant chords. These are chords which want to create a journey, a feeling of going somewhere. 
the close relationship means you could substitute the chords for each other or play arpeggios of each chord against each one. Chords 5 and 7 again are very similar, sharing three notes. G7, G, B, D, F, B minor 7 flat 5, B, D, F, A. Now these chords have a dominant function and want to send us back to chord 1. And the remaining three chords, chord 1, chord 3 and 6, are also very similar, sharing notes if you compare E minor to C and A minor 7 to C. C major 7, C, E, G, B, E minor 7, E, G, B, D, A minor 7, A, C, E, G. Now these chords are what's called tonic chords. They express the tonal centre, if you like, a feeling of home. Um, C obviously does that to the strongest degree, but this is why chord 3 can substitute for, for C, and also you've got that whole relative major, relative minor relationship between chord 1 and 6, between C and A minor 7. I thought that theory would be interesting to bring in in the context of today's lesson, just to make you think about how some chords are closely related to one another, how they share similar functions and can work in place of one another or work together. Anyway, if you've got any questions, you leave them below. Don't forget you can get the PDF uh, with the tab and notation from today's lesson from the uh, link in the description at my website. There's also a link there to my Patreon page. Or if you want other videos related to you know, interesting chord substitutions, then check out my video on the tritone substitution and check out my video on chromatic passing chords that I like to use. But as I said, a lot of people overlook just using the chords in key to add movement and interest. Stuff you hear in kind of pianists comping all the time. Anyway, hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Until next time, you take care.